Hello YouTubers, this is Average Joe Video and today we are going to go through the assembly steps for the Thule Double Track Pro XT2 Bicycle Rack. This is model number 905402. This is a brand new rack from Thule. You'll notice that the box simply says Thule Double Track Pro XT, but on the Thule website it says Thule Double Track Pro XT2. So this is the same model as what's reflected on the website. This bicycle rack has an approximate cost of $400. I have been waiting since the beginning of May for this to arrive. I know with COVID that Thule is very backed up with their supply. Uh, once items are in stock, very quickly they are depleted. So my advice to you is if you're ordering from the Thule website anytime soon, once you see that the rack is in stock that you want, make sure you hit the add to cart button because when racks are out of stock on there, you're not even able to add to cart so that you can be on the list to receive one. So you'll notice here that I'm unpacking everything you want to be mindful that the cardboard pieces will come in handy especially if you are working on a hard surface like I am because you want to protect the tubing and the frame members of the rack from getting all scratched so that's why I'm just setting things aside instead of immediately discarding them and then I also took a moment to check the instruction manual and compare the parts list with the parts that I received so you're not going to see that in the video but make sure that you do that as well so that you're not assembling something and then finding out you're missing a piece midway through so the first step is I'm just installing the portion that fits into the receiver and you're going to notice that a hex bolt is provided. You want to make sure that you have the lock washer as well as the standard washer on the hex bolt prior to screwing that into the, the rack assembly. Now in this particular case I'm just simply using a three quarter inch socket wrench. Tooley does provide you with a three quarter inch wrench. The socket just makes things a lot easier. Notice on this next piece that one side of the tube has the Tooley logo and the other side does not. The reason why I'm pointing that out is because you want to make sure that the Tooley logo is facing down. So a lot of people assemble these incorrectly. They put the Tooley logo facing up. The reason why that logo is facing down is so that when you move the rack to the transport position and there's no bicycles on it, then you still see the Thule logo. So that's why if you're wondering why is he placing the Thule logo facing down, that's the theory behind it. Because the rack itself has another Thule logo on the back of it that you see when the bicycles are actually on the rack. And I'll show you that towards the end of the video. So right now I'm just installing the bolts. Once again, you want to make sure that you're tightening things evenly. This is pretty basic. I found the three quarter inch socket to be much easier to work with and that's why I'm going to use that throughout the video. But Thule does provide you with that. So if you don't have a socket handy, not to worry. You still have a tool available that you can get everything assembled. Okay, next we're going to slide the plastic cover over this assembly. And this is something that is mentioned in the instruction manual, but the instruction manual is comprised of only pictures. There is no text. So I didn't really follow this step the first time and I missed the plastic cover. So that forced me to disassemble everything. Make sure that you slide that on prior to inserting this and then placing the washers and the nuts on these bolts. So once I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug up the nuts on each of these bolts. Keep in mind that after this step, it is simply going to be the details, like the wheel cradles, the plastic, as well as the pieces that clamp down on the frame whenever the bikes are in transport. So right now we're going to take the other half of this center plastic piece that covers the button, and we're gonna assemble that. So these actually just can be held together, they'll stay into position, and then you can use the provided Allen screws to finish fastening the two together. So for this, you'll just need the three Allen screws and then those two pieces will be together and you're ready to move to the next step. Now it's time to move on to some more plastic pieces. I found it interesting that the plastic pieces that cover this metal bracket in the center of the rack where it pivots do not require any screws. They simply snap on over the metal frame and that's all that holds them in place. 
Okay, next we're going to go ahead and press in the center button, which will unlock the mast. And now that center mast is going to be in the upright position. Now we're going to go ahead and focus on installing the brackets that essentially clamp down on the frame of the bikes. So you have to install two of these since it's a two bike rack. And in order to do this, you're simply going to use the provided Allen bolt as well as the nut. Now, the thing that's nice about this is there is a molded hex portion on the back of this bracket that essentially keeps the nut from spinning while you're tightening it with the Allen wrench. So that's an added bonus. I just found that the nut is actually really small. So I was trying to be very careful not to drop that or lose it because there wasn't much room to work with that. Okay, so now we're just going to repeat this process for the other bracket. Something I want to mention is I was a bit confused by this design because essentially we are bolting a bracket to the portion that has a lock on it, which means if someone didn't have a key, they could simply unbolt that bracket and they would still be able to get the bike. So that's one thing about the rack that I just didn't really understand and it came to my attention as I was assembling it. Okay, so now it's time to install the wheel cradles. Pay very close attention to the picture that is shown in the instruction manual. Make sure that on the left side of the rack, you are placing the outside wheel cradle on first, like I'm doing in the video. And then next, you're going to place the inside wheel cradle on. So make sure you're following that order so that that way you're able to move things around later and fit various sized bicycles. So as you can see, they're a little snug to slide on there. They just fit very tightly. And now I'm going to go ahead and reverse the process on the right-hand side. So first, I'm going to put the inside cradle on, and then I'm going to put the outside cradle on. Once again, this is very important because this is what allows you to adjust the bike rack to accommodate different size bicycles. So you just want to make sure that you're following this step very carefully. That way you don't have to remove the end caps and start over. And as you can see, the wheel cradles are actually very stable. They're very solid. I didn't go ahead and clamp down the quick releases yet because I'm waiting until I size everything for my bicycles. Now it's time to go ahead and install the wheel straps. You'll notice that I'm placing the rubber boot over top of the strap. This slides onto the strap in order to protect the rim of your bicycle wheels. So that just keeps the rim from getting marred or scratched in any way. So this process is very straightforward. These straps are very secure, so I anticipate that the wheels are going to be held very securely to the wheel cradle. And then I'm simply going to repeat this process for all of the cradles on the rack, and that takes care of the final assembly for the wheel cradles. Okay, next it is time to go ahead and install the end caps for the main tube. Now this is the part where I actually struggled and after looking at things further, it turns out that I don't believe Thule drilled the holes close enough to the end of the tube to line up with the channel on the actual end cap. And I struggled with this for quite a while and then I just eventually just resulted in taking my impact driver and using that to run it at an angle so I could catch that channel. But thanks to video editing, you don't have to worry about seeing all the struggles. You just get to see the final product. But I'm giving you that as a heads up. It is possible that the end cap itself was simply molded wrong. But then whenever I got to the opposite side, I had the same issue. And you can see on this one, I'm trying to get it to catch and it just will not catch. So I ended up having to use my impact driver once again. I do recommend if you're going to use an impact driver, you're very careful. You'll notice on this one that I don't run it in the whole way. I finish it off with the Allen key just because I don't want to strip anything out. After all, you are simply screwing into plastic. That was really the only thing that got me super frustrated was installing the end caps. And again, either the holes were not drilled far enough to the end of the metal tube or the plastic pieces were molded incorrectly. But I seem to think that it's a tubing issue and not uh, a molding issue in this particular case. Okay, now it's time to install the lock cylinders. 
Now you're going to notice in the assembly pack there are two keys that have numbers on them and then there is a key that does not have a number. In order to install the lock cylinder you have to use the key that does not have the number because that is the change key. So that key is only used to install the lock cylinder. Then the key that has the number on it is the key that is used to actually lock and unlock that particular cylinder. So just keep that in mind. There are three cylinders. We have to install the third cylinder in the hex bolt lock. So that's all there is to it. You want to make sure that you don't forget to remove the protective cap then from that lock cylinder that goes on the hex bolt. So that's easy. You can just pop that out. And now you basically have a lock system that is incorporating the same key for all three cylinders. So if this video helped you, please smash that like button below and consider subscribing to the channel. I plan to do more updates about this Thule bicycle rack as I put it to good use. Thanks for watching.